So we've uh, talked now a lot about these uh, first order differential equations, but we haven't really talked about how to go beyond first order. And of course, uh, those are going to be very relevant problems in, uh, in physics and in any other kind of environment. We're going to need to solve at least second order um, differential equations. Now in, um, the, in calculus and in ODE in the course, um, you may know that this is this is difficult to go to higher order differential equations. But as with many other things in, um, in, in uh, computational methods, it actually is, uh, is just as easy to solve second order or nth order problems as it is to solve first order problems. All of the methods we've developed before, they work just as well um, with second order and then nth order differential equations. So that's great. Um, so we don't have any um, difficulty in, in dealing with these higher order differential equations. So let, to do that, to, to look at that in more detail, let's look at this example, which is this Hermit differential equation. So as you can see, it's a second order differential equation. It has a second derivative here um, for y double prime. Um, and this is uh, the Hermit um, equation. And so it's got an n here to indicate um, the order of the um, Hermit polynomial that is a solution to this equation. Uh, so what we'll look at is um, in particular n equal to two. So that's the order we're going to look at. So, but how do we turn this into a, um, into a, a first order uh, differential equation, which we know how to solve? Well, what we'll do is we'll introduce a new variable. That's going to be the velocity. Um, and we can call it whatever we want. We call it velocity. If you think about y as position, v is velocity, then the second derivative will be acceleration. Um, that terminology might give you a hint as to how to solve um, the second project. So now we can write this single second order differential equation as two first order differential equations. So y prime is v, because we've introduced v explicitly as y prime, and v prime, which is y double prime, will be 2t y prime, which is v, minus 2n times y. So if we now treat y and v as independent um, parts, as, as members or as uh, components of a vector, the zeros in the first element of an array, then we can calculate y prime, we can solve y prime equals v and v prime equals 2tv minus 2ny simultaneously. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll calculate y um, zero and y one um, in a similar um, approach as, as before based on the current values of y0 and y1, okay? So what we'll have to do to do this is essentially vectorize or um, we're gonna put a solver that we've written before. So first of all, let's introduce our, uh, our function. So our function f um, will now be the function that takes as input y as a vector, a two component vector, and that returns y prime and f uh, and v prime again as this two component vector. So how will we do that? Well, y prime will just start off with zeros and y prime zero, which is our first component here, will be v and v is the first component of y. So that's y one. And then y prime one, which is v prime, will be two t v, v is y one. So this is y one here minus two n um, y zero. So that's our function that is now a vectorized version of this differential equation here by turning this into a vector that has components y and v and therefore the, the derivative of that vector has components y prime and v prime or y prime and y double prime. Um, so now uh, we'll also need to know initial conditions and for the, the second or the, the Hermit polynomial with n equal to two, those uh, initial conditions are basically the point through which that polynomial goes and that's minus two. Um, and at that point it's symmetric. So y prime um, is equal to zero. So um, of course now we're going to have to vectorize our Ngakuta method, solve RK. Um, so that requires a little bit of playing around. Um, so we're going to have to, um, you know, figure out how do we turn vectors from 
uh, if those two component vectors into uh, into numpy arrays so we can work with them conveniently so I uh, put some commands there that might be useful so how do we create zeros how do we turn one array for example the array one two into a numpy array so that's numpy s array um, and then can we assign things to each other so if we have our zeros here which is our four two block of zeros we can assign a numpy array of these two components one and two to that first component there so that will be useful um, in how we um, vectorize our uh, orangakuta method and so this is what we get then so we'll want to uh, turn y0 which we might pass as a list into a numpy array we'll want to pass the times into a numpy array um, in an in, uh, um, array as well and then uh, or y will be um, an, um, a vector or a matrix in some sense that has uh, as one coordinate the length of or the number of steps at which we want to evaluate our function uh, or uh, which we want to evaluate our solution and then in the other direction it will have the number of components in y and then we just continue the rest as before we know that our function f returns um, which is our, our hermit function that we already vectorized up here so that will return a two component vector if we pass it a two component vector um, and so everything else is essentially unchanged and what we will return here ultimately is this um, this array of dimensions the length of the t times the length of the initial conditions so that's our vectorized version for our Runga-Kutta method so we can of course try this out let's do this between times 0 and 2 in 50 steps so we're using here the regular Runga-Kutta method not the adaptive step method that I've shown before um, if you wanted to you could vectorize the adaptive step method as well um, so we'll use well we'll introduce a lambda here that uh, just gives us our, uh, our second order Hermit polynomial and then we'll solve that vectorized version of the second order Hermit polynomial with that initial condition and then plot it together with the actual Hermit polynomial of order 2 um, and as you can see this agrees very well um, we can also of course look at uh, the difference um, and h2 is undefined because we've defined this as just h um, so you see the difference is uh, is very small at the 10 to the minus 6 level again as as is uh, as is common um, so that's how we solve second order and of course then third order nth order differential equations we just turn the derivatives themselves into independent um, variables and uh, we have uh, we, we write it basically as a set of single order differential equations first order differential equations in those additional vector um, components so uh, in the next video we'll apply that to the physical pendulum which is uh, um, similar to the pendulum that you're used you're probably familiar with from physics 101 okay